Most worshipful sir, the brethren of Acacia Lodge number 16, being animated with the desire to promote the honor and interest of the craft, have, at great pains and expense, erected a Masonic Hall for their convenience and accommodation. They are desirous that the same should be examined by the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge, and if it should meet with their approbation, that it be solemnly dedicated to Masonic purposes agreeable to ancient form. Masonry teaches that we should never begin any great or important undertaking without first invoking the blessing of the deity. Will you please rise for a word of prayer? Master Supreme, accept our praise. Still bless this consecrated band, parent of light. Illumine our ways and guide us by thy sovereign hand. May faith, hope, and charity divine here hold their undivided reign. May friendship and harmony combine to soothe our cares and banish pain. May pity dwell within each breast. Relief attend the suffering poor. Thousands by this, our lodge, be blessed still worth. Distress, so want no more. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Most worshipful, the hall in which we are now assembled and the plan upon which it has been constructed, having met with your approbation, it is the desire of the fraternity that it should be dedicated according to ancient form and usage. Only the participants in the ceremony will respond to the sound of the gavel and grand honors. Brethren of Acacia Lodge, the skill and fidelity displayed in you at the construction of this Masonic Hall has secured the admiration of the entire Grand Lodge. And we sincerely pray this, that this edifice may continue as a lasting monument to its founders. For the Grand Marshal, you will assemble, assemble the officers of the Grand Lodge of Virginia around the ceremonial lodge. Genius of masonry descend, and with it bring thy spotless train. Constant our sacred rights of sin, as we adore thy peaceful reign. Most worshipful, in the dedication of Masonic Halls, it has been of immemorial custom to pour corn upon the lodge as an emblem of nourishment. I therefore present you this vessel of corn to be employed by you according to ancient usage. In the name of the great Jehovah, to whom be all honor and glory, I do solemnly dedicate this house to Freemasonry. Brethren, the grand honors.
And with thee, virtue, bright as me. Great love, great truth, great friendship here. While social mirth shall lend her aid to soothe the wrinkled brow of hair. Most worshipful wine, the emblem of refreshment, having been used by our ancient brethren in the dedication and consecration of their lodges, I therefore present you this vessel of wine to be used on the present occasion according to ancient Masonic custom. In the name of the Holy Saints John, I do solemnly dedicate this hall to virtue. Brethren, the grand honors twice. Charity with goodness crown, encircled in thy heavenly robe, diffuse thy blessings all around to every corner of the globe. I present to you to be used according with ancient custom this vessel of oil, an emblem of joy, which should be animated in each breast on this completion of this auspicious occasion. In the name of the whole fraternity, I do solemnly dedicate this lodge to universal benevolence. Brethren, the grand honors thrice. May the Lord, the giver of every good and perfect gift, bless the brethren here assembled in all their lawful undertakings and grant to each of them an equal supply of the corn of nourishment, the wine of refreshment, and the oil of joy and gladness. Amen.
ceremonies we have performed here are none of meaning rites, nor the amusing pageants of an idle hour, but each has a solemn and instructive importance. Permit me to point out to you and to impress upon your minds the ennobling sentiments they are so well adapted to convey. This hall, designed and built by wisdom, supported by strength and adorned by beauty, we first consecrated in the name of the great Jehovah. This teaches us in all our works, begun and finished, to acknowledge, adore, and magnify him. It reminds us also to enter the door of the lodge in his fear, to put our trust in him while passing through his trials, and to hope in him for the reward of its labors. Let then the altar at the center of this lodge be devoted to his service, and the lofty arch of its ceiling resound with his praise. May the eye which seeth in secret witness here the unaffected piety which withdraws from the engagements of the world to silence and privacy, that it may be exercised with less interruption and less ostentation. Our travel around the lodge reminds us of the travels of human life in which masonry is an enlightened, safe, and pleasant path. This tessellated pavement of mosaic work intimates to us the checkered diversity and uncertainty of human affairs. Our step is time, our progression, eternity. Following our ancient constitutions with mystic rites, we dedicate this hall to Freemasonry. Our best attachments are due to the craft. In its prosperity, we find our joy. and paying in honor, we honor ourselves. But its work transcends our highest praise, and its glory will outsound our anthems. Brethren, it is a matter of pride that we have our names inscribed on the record of Freemasonry. May it be our highest ambition that they should shed luster upon the immortal page. This hall has also been dedicated to virtue. This worthy approbation will always be duly regarded. While the moral duties, which our sublime lectures inculcate with affecting and impressive pertinency, are cherished in our hearts and illustrated in our lives. As Freemasonry aims to enliven the spirit of philanthropy and promote the cause of charity, so we dedicate this hall to universal benevolence in the assurance that every brother will dedicate his affections and abilities to the same generous purpose. That while he displays a warm and cordial affection to those who are of the household of the faith, he will extend his benevolent regards and good wishes to the whole family of mankind. Such, my brethren, is the significant meaning of the solemn rites we have just performed because such are the peculiar duties of every lodge. We need not enlarge upon them now, nor show how they diverge as rays from a center to enlighten, improve, and to cheer the whole circle of life. Their import and their exercise is familiar to all of you. In their knowledge and their practice, may you fulfill the whole, may you fulfill the high purpose of Freemasonry. Uh, Worshipful Master uh, David Hill, a uh, past master of our lodge, has been in the process of reviewing uh, our lodge minutes going back to 1877 and scanning those so that they'll be available online. He's prepared a brief history of our lodge. And Worshipful David, if you wouldn't mind, let me pass off the microphone so that they can also hear you downstairs. Most worshipful sir, right and worshipful sirs, worshipful masters, brethren, and friends all, I've been asked to give a brief summary of the history of Acacia Lodge number 16. On March 10th, 1875, worshipful brother John Y. Worthington sent a letter along with $25 fee asking the Grand Lodge for a dispensation to start a lodge at Clifton Station. The original petition contained the signatures of 16 master masons in good standing and with Manassa Lodge number 182 cheerfully vouching for the Masonic and moral qualifications of the petitioners, they recommended favorable consideration. <clears throat> Joseph Hopkins, District Deputy Grand Master for the 1st Masonic District, wrote that because of these men making their residence in and around Clifton Station, it was a hardship to travel to Henry number 57 in Fairfax Courthouse and Manassa number 182 in Manassas to attend lodge, and it was his belief that a new lodge here could flourish. 
under a dispensation issued on March 11th, 1876, by Most Worshipful William B. Taliafeno, Grand Master of Masons in Virginia, the first regular communication of Acacia Lodge UD was held in their hall later that month. Nearly two years later, at a stated communication in January 1878, the Grand Lodge entered the hall of Acacia Lodge and was received by the Worshipful Master and the Brethren with grand honors. The Grand Lodge then presented a charter to Acacia Lodge number 16. The original location for Acacia Lodge was Makeley's Storehouse at the corner of Main and Chapel Roads, just a few hundred feet from this very location. There were several attempts to find a permanent home for Acacia Lodge in the ensuing three decades to no avail. Finally, at the April 1903 stated meeting, a committee was appointed to solicit subs subscriptions and what was to be called the Joint Stock Company, which would purchase a building in use as a lumber mill from a Mr. R.C. Hickey and rent it to the lodge. The lodge was to pay annual interest and keep the lodge insured with a reliable insurance company. Acacia Lodge made payments to the loan's interest and occasionally to the principal until early 1920, when an agreement was reached with Mr. Hickey to exchange lots for one more convenient and which was located on Main Street. The lodge was then moved by rolling it on logs and being pulled by a team of horses and or mules to its present site in June 1920 from its original location several hundred feet to the east. Acacia Lodge history is much more than a recitation of its building of our building woes, however. We have a good relationship with the town of Clifton, and we play an uh, active part in community affairs. Various town of Clifton committees regularly use our building for their meetings, and in years past, the PTA used our hall for social affairs, and the Young Men's Club of Clifton used the first floor for dances. In addition, the Clifton Volunteer Fire Department was founded in this building in 1942. Acacia Lodge was also, has also been invited to lay the cornerstone of several local institutions over the last 140 years to include the Oak Grove Methodist Church, the Clifton Baptist Church, and the Clifton School. Our building has been flooded several times from nearby Pope's Head Creek, the most devastating of which was in June of 2006. The 2006 flood served as a catalyst to unite the brethren in pulling together as one to save our lodge building into what you see today. With the generosity of all the lodges in the 4th Masonic District, Columbia Lodge, and individuals from around the Commonwealth, we have managed to stay in our building in Clifton and contribute to the lives of its neighbors, of its members, the community, and to Freemasonry. Acacia's motto, the greatest little lodge in the Commonwealth of Virginia, was coined in 2005 by Worshipful Master George Dick May. It neatly captures our can-do spirit. Thank you. Most worshipful sir, right worshipful sirs, worshipful masters, brethren, distinguished visitors, and friends all, I'd like to uh, thank you all for joining us at the dedication and 140th anniversary celebration of Acacia Lodge number 16. While doing some research on the history of the lodge, worshipful William Bombach, who's sitting in the back taking pictures, uh, discovered that Acacia Lodge has ne had never been officially dedicated. We decided that the 140th anniversary of our lodge was an appropriate time to conduct the ceremony. Let's see, uh, um, I'd like to thank the Grand Master of Virginia, most worshipful Gary Wallace Taylor, and other members of the Grand Lodge of Virginia for joining us this morning. I'd like to thank Right Worshipful Don McAndrews, as well as Right Worshipful Ray Solomon for helping coordinate this event. Uh, I'd also like to thank Lodge. After the flood, the brothers of Acacia Lodge put a tremendous amount of blood, sweat, and tears in order to rebuild our lodge. It would be impossible to thank by name every brother and non-brother who contributed. I would, however, like to recognize a few brothers who were instrumental in the rebuilding of this lodge. First, William Wo Worshipful William Bombeck, 
My brother William has been a tireless force working behind the scenes to make our lodge better. Uh, because of him, we have a lot of wireless technology, wireless thermostats, and William has done an excellent job keeping our lodge running. Uh, second, worshipful, uh, Brandt Baber. Brandt Baber exemplifies the virtues that we hold dear in Freemasonry, and he played a, a very key role in rebuilding the lodge. Third, I'd like to thank Brother Bill Shelton. Uh, Brother Bill Shelton did a lot of the electrical and plumbing work on the lodge. Um, I learned actually from his son, uh, Right Worshipful John Shelton, that up in the attic of the lodge, when they were renovating, there were glass uh, wire insulators with old wire that had been covered in cloth that they had to tear out and replace. So without, um, without Brother Bill Shelton, we'd likely be sitting here in the dark. Next, I'd like to thank Brother Doug Detweiler and Charlie Selby. These brothers have been longstanding members of our lodge. They've been here through thick and thin. In fact, Brother uh, Doug, Detweiler, Doug Detweiler was actually present at the foundation of the volunteer fire department here on the ground floor in 1942. I'd like to give all these brothers a round of applause for everything they've done and continue to do to help keep our lodge great. Finally, I'd like to thank the Jobies of Bethel 55 and their honored queen, as well as uh, Miss Caitlin Joseph, the current Miss Joe Zarter of Virginia. So thank you for joining us. And they were also helping with the reception, which will be held after we conclude up at the Clifton Presbyterian Church. And those, that concludes my remarks. Those worshipful. I got one. Worshipful, most worshipfuls, right worshipfuls, distinguished guests, I want you to know what an honor it is for our Grand Lodge to be here for the dedication of Acacia Lodge this morning. I also want you to know that when you talk about Freemasonry being a tower of strength, Acacia Lodge is a perfect example of that. The dedication, the support from the worshipful master, all the way down from the elected and appointed officers to the brethren of this lodge has truly made a difference. And it's a perfect example of what our fraternity is all about. To look at this lodge and what you've accomplished and what you've had to deal with on a number of occasions is really quite an achievement. I hope you realize that. And it's one that we all recognize this morning. So on behalf of the Grand Lodge and the elected and appointed officers, we're honored to be here and we truly feel that you exemplify Freemasonry as a tower of strength. We wish you the very best in the future and I have no reservations that there's a bright future for Acacia Lodge and our fraternity. Congratulations, brethren. Uh, this concludes the public portion of the ceremony. Uh, if you don't mind adjoining the Clifton Presbyterian Church, we will across the street and up the hill. We will conclude our business here and join you shortly. Jim, did you have something? Is it appropriate? It is, yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah. It's a short run up to that. I uh, tell you, since you go, I'm a neighbor here at Clifton, uh, but I'm coming to you today not as a, a neighbor, uh, but on behalf of a grateful Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, to compliment you on this wonderful structure that stands here uh, stood for many generations. But to thank you for what Big Freemasonry does, building character in so many men who carry on within our commonwealth and do so many good things, and that you are the foundation of this neighborhood and so many others. Again, I just want to thank you, and on behalf of a grateful commonwealth of Virginia, I'd like to present this flag that we have flown over the Capitol in honor, uh, honor of the Hodge. Thank you.